Once we have the Hubble palette image with the color calibration applied, we can use a technique that we call palette polarization to shift the chromatic representation toward the blue and the red. We can do this with pixel math. To polarize the palette, we need to apply a different formula to each color channel because we're not going to change the green. We therefore need to uncheck this box. By doing this, we can apply a different formula to each of the three color channels. We're going to leave the green channel as it is using this template, $t. This tells PixelMath to simply superimpose the target image in the green channel. In other words, not to do anything to the image in this channel. Now we're going to apply the polarization formula to the red and blue channels. To shift the chromatic representation toward the red and the blue, we need to multiply the two channels by a factor. If we apply this formula, we increase the brightness of the red channel by 1.5. And now we do the same in the blue channel, increasing the brightness by 1.5. Let's apply this to Preview 1 and see what happens. The nebula changes color. Now it isn't as green. However, the sky background has turned magenta. This is because we multiplied the whole image by a factor, and that factor doesn't just affect the nebula, but the image as a whole. To avoid this and ensure that the sky background stays neutral, we need to multiply the light from the objects only, not the sky background pedestal. To do this, we need to calculate the pedestal of the sky background in the original image. Let's go through this step by step. First, we create a new independent image using the preview we used of the sky background. We can do this by clicking and dragging its selector from the view selector and dropping it on the workspace. Now that we have the new image, we're going to change its identifier to BG for background. Identifiers are important in pixel math because we use them to refer to images in the formulas we use. Here, we want to measure the brightness of the sky background. We do this by calculating the median value of the image we've just created. Why do we calculate the median and not the mean? What's the difference? Imagine that we have a 21-pixel image with a star in the middle the star will obviously be much brighter than the sky background. If we calculate the mean of all these values, even though the sky background accounts for most of the image pixels and the star only a few, the high brightness values of those star pixels completely skew the sky background measurement. The high star pixel values raise the value of the mean so much that all the background pixels are less than the mean. In other words, the mean doesn't represent the typical values of the sky background. But if we put those pixel values in order from smallest to largest and take the middle number or median as the reference value, then approximately half of the sky background values will be below the median and the other half will be above it. The median is therefore much more representative of the lightness of the sky background. This is a really important concept to understand when working with images. What are the implications of this on our image? Well, we can create a larger preview of the sky background that contains a few stars, and those stars won't affect the median value. In other words, the median is much more stable than the mean, and this is the value we should generally use to measure an image's sky background. We can calculate the median of this image using the MED or MED function in PixelMath. Then, in parentheses, we type in the identifier of the image whose median we want to calculate. How do we keep the sky background value stable when we multiply this color channel by a factor? With the following formula. First, we subtract the median of the sky background from the image, and this is what we multiply by the polarization factor. Once we've multiplied the object signal, we add the median again so that the sky background recovers its original lightness. We do this with the red channel and the blue channel. In this way, when we polarize the palette, the sky background remains stable. This formula is always the same, so this process is really easy to use. In fact, we can simplify it even more. If we want to change this value, we have to do it in both channels. 
To cut out that step, we can change the multiplication factor to a variable. Let's call it k. We set the value of k in the Symbols tab. If we set it to 1.5, we'll be creating a Hubble palette with RGB weights of 1.5, 1, and 1.5. Now all we need to do is change the value of K to adjust the polarization of the palette. When we change the value of K, that value is automatically changed in the formulas for the red and blue channels too. If we set it to 1, we just get the original image. Once we have the Hubble palette image with the color calibrated and the polarization factor we want, we can continue with the next processing steps.